honors you from Scotland. Here is Drew McIntyre. It'll all be about me, Drew McIntyre. I was a chosen one 15 years ago. Then I got fired. Then I had to work my ass off, earn my way back to this company. I didn't call WWE. They called me. It was June 12, 2014, and for Drew McIntyre, he was out of time, and unfortunately, now he had to say goodbye to the WWE. His career was an unmitigated disaster, continually falling down the card, relegated to a comedy jobber, and the ceiling that was put on him by simply being called the chosen one had not been lived up to, and by all accounts, he was a bust. Fired from the WWE, and it was a broken dream. The dream in WWE may have been over, but he was able to have the resurgence of a lifetime and make a comeback that no one ever fathomed, and finally prove why he was the chosen one all along. Destiny turned into disaster, and somehow that disaster was turned back into destiny. At age 15, Drew McIntyre started his training, eventually making his debut in 2003. He performed in British Championship Wrestling under his real name, Drew Galloway. I think you can see that he had everything you'd want in a top guy, especially the intimidating size. At Irish Whip Wrestling, he met one of his best friends in the wrestling world, and that was Sheamus. These two, throughout their career on the indies and in the WWE, would have classic matches and a rivalry that spanned much longer than meets the eye. Two out of three falls matches, no holds barred, even a classic triple threat at WrestleMania, two powerhouses, and wrestling soulmates. On the independents, he was relied on to basically be the guy to represent against the more established talents, showing that promoters had a trust in him right from the hop. Long story short, just four years after he started wrestling, he caught the eye of WWE and he was officially signed to a developmental deal. On October 12, 2007, he made his debut on SmackDown, taking on Zack Ryder in a winning effort to kick off his main roster run. Oddly enough, it was on this day backstage where Stephanie told Drew not to wrestle with his last name Galloway, so they made a late change and went with McIntyre. From here, he was making appearances here and there without anything concrete really happening. But of course, WWE wanted to train him in their way and teach him the WWE style of doing things, from the layout of the matches and the mic work and the best place for that to happen and the prospects of tomorrow to develop was FCW and OVW. He eventually went back up to SmackDown and got a hard reboot when he was introduced by Vince McMahon in September of 2009. Vince came down to the ring and told everyone that the man that was coming out would be a future world champion, someone who was young and would lead this company into the next generation, someone who was the chosen one, Drew McIntyre. Calling someone the chosen one is an insane barometer right off the hop, that's a big time ceiling to live up to. Now the expectations were sky high and every move was amplified. What was he gonna do? Does he live up to the billing or does he just end up flopping? And early on, success came his way. He beat John Morrison for the Intercontinental Championship at TLC at just age 24, eventually holding this title for 161 days firmly developing in the mid-card and wrestling guys like Matt Hardy and Kofi Kingston. Heading into 2010, it's no shock that he was in line to do big things, but what's crazy is what was reported to happen at WrestleMania 26. This was of course main evented by Undertaker and Shawn Michaels, but according to Drew, it was supposed to be Undertaker versus Drew McIntyre earlier in the show. That's how quickly WWE wanted to build him up. Drew said this on Stone Cold's podcast that he was going to go one on one with The Undertaker, saying that Shawn Michaels told him that this was the internal plan, but the company never confirmed this to him. Instead, he was in the Money in the Bank ladder match, which he didn't end up winning. Following WrestleMania, he continued his rivalry with Kofi Kingston. He was in an on screen beef with Teddy Long, who was the GM of SmackDown, at one point getting stripped of the Intercontinental Championship only to get it back via favoritism from Vince, basically undermining his authority as he had the big boss by his side. By the summer, Vince was written off TV by the Nexus. He eventually lost this title and was written off because his work visa expired, something that was used on screen as well. Competing in the Money in the Bank ladder match for the second time that year, and things were going just fine. It was this steady development of someone who was still a young kid at this point. And then things took a turn in the opposite direction come the summer of 2010. This is where he started to fall down the card. In May of that year, he and WWE diva Tiffany had gotten married. In August, the two had been out partying in LA and when they got back to their hotel room, they got into an argument and Tiffany was arrested for what was believed to be domestic abuse against Drew. The charges were eventually dropped and nothing happened to Drew even though his wife was suspended. 
Why WWE didn't like this was it came during SummerSlam weekend, one of the company's most important shows of the year, and it gave them a really bad image. Tiffany was suspended and then eventually released from the company, with Drew eventually calling the whole situation a huge misunderstanding. It can be said that Drew not regaining his push could, underline, could be attributed to this, the two eventually splitting up the following year. So still so young, going through a messy divorce obviously changed things for him. And now we get on to the on-screen bit and it was a disaster. Later in 2010, he won the tag team championships with Cody Rhodes. And in a way, it's perfect that these two men were tag team champions together. Two guys who were young and earmarked for success, but it never went their way. Both coming back and returning like no one ever thought they would. But I'll get into that later. They lost the tag team titles to the Nexus, that being David Otunga and John Cena, and McIntyre was just floating around at this point and it was a complete mess. It was really over for him. He didn't recover the momentum he had pre-SummerSlam. He then got into this storyline with Kelly Kelly where he was trying to express his love for her while she was telling Drew to stop being so violent. The chosen one had now became the forgotten one. He had completely stagnated into the low end of the mid card and that was it. He was wrestling on superstars in throwaway matches. At one point Bret Hart even addressed this saying that WWE was wasting him. He had fallen out of favor backstage. The report was that Drew was a bit too high maintenance and failed to get himself over. McIntyre was on an undefeated streak in 2010 and you guys probably remember Jack Swagger if you watched WWE at the time. He won the world title and that was supposed to be where Drew was slotted in. His incredible rise came to a crashing halt, switching between Raw and SmackDown without a defined direction. He was on Team Laurinaitis at Mania 28, he competed in NXT after their rebrand, and then he went on to be part of the three-man band, a trio of comedy jobbers alongside Jinder Mahal and Heath Slater. He'd come down to the ring rocking the electric air guitar with a bandana and mascara, and now look at him, relegated to a comedy role, and he was just there. After this, it was over. On June 12, 2014, Drew McIntyre was fired from WWE. The company clearly saw the writing on the wall with him. They didn't want to try with him. They clearly did not see any value in him. Not even the headliner of the release page. That's how bad things had gotten. He lost it all, but as the old saying goes, the most dangerous man is a man with nothing to lose. A month later, he appeared in Insane Championship Wrestling in Scotland. A few months later, he became ICW Champion, mixing it up with up-and-coming stars and names of days gone by. By the sheer workload that was coming, you could see that he didn't have the attitude of, oh, I'm from WWE, why am I doing this? He instead took the firing as a wake-up call and revived his career. Wrestling Joe Coffey, Sabu, he wrestled in Denmark, Ireland, of course the UK slowly building up his portfolio on a burgeoning independent scene. At the same time, he was working in Evolve and becoming their world champion. He took the title international to wrestle guys like Ricochet, Rich Swan, and PJ Black. He then went on to beat Johnny Gargano for the Dragon Gate USA Open the Freedom Gate title, setting the record as the longest reigning Evolve champion and the most title defenses too. So many different promotions wrestled so many different competitors and proved that he could shoulder the workload. But one important aspect that started to to change for Drew was his promo work. Now, in the WWE, obviously he had charisma for sure, but he's admitted that because of his thick accent, he focused on enunciating words in his promos rather than the delivery or the content of the promos. He debuted for TNA in January of 2015 and was part of the Rising Stable with Micah and some other guy you've probably heard of. Like most factions, they split up and Eli Drake and Drew Galloway had a rivalry throughout the summer of 2015. He still had the ICW title and at this point, he was just soaking it all in. He had a few TNA World title matches but couldn't get the job done against Matt Hardy and EC3. Eventually, he won a feast or fired match, grabbing the contract that contained a shot at the TNA World Championship. If you aren't familiar, the match has a contract in every corner and each of the contracts has a different title match. Once you take the briefcase off the pole, you can only get the briefcase if you land with both feet touching the floor on the outside. It's money in the bank meets the opposite end of the Royal Rumble. Drew eventually cashed this in to become the TNA World Champion in March of 2016. 
One of the moves he used in this match was the Claymore, a running single leg drop kick to the face and the origin of this move is kinda random. He said that when he was in 3MB he attempted a running boot and because his pants were so tight he fell down while hitting the move and landed flat on his back, it was adapted and the rest is history. As TNA world champion he defended the title against Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy and Lashley before eventually losing it to Lashley after just 89 days. Clearly a hot commodity at this point, I gotta reiterate his work load was massive and his growth was even bigger. Eventually he parted ways with TNA, this coming after the company reportedly had a very casual approach to renewing his contract as they wanted to re-up just 2 weeks before it was about to expire. 31 years old and now he had a lot more experience under his belt. He had refined and rebuilt himself as a trustworthy, mature and reliable star. And guess who came calling? It was World Wrestling Entertainment. We got ourselves a classic crowd shot at TakeOver Orlando, April 1st, 2017. Drew McIntyre was back and this wasn't a joke and now he was out to prove that neither was he. He became the number one contender to Bobby Roode's NXT Championship, a title that he would contend for at TakeOver Brooklyn 3. McIntyre has revealed that he asked to start in NXT rather than bypass it and debut on the main roster again. At TakeOver Brooklyn 3, Drew McIntyre became NXT Champion. Now he displayed a bigger mean streak in his matches a better physique, a stronger ability to connect with the audience. He became the first person to win a main roster championship before he won the NXT title. He only held on to it for 91 days, eventually losing it to Andrade at TakeOver War Games. In this, he suffered a torn bicep and when he returned, he really returned. April 16, 2018. That was the day where Drew McIntyre made the journey all the way back to the main roster. Aligned himself as Dolph Ziggler's heavy, the two telling WWE fans that they were here to eradicate complacency in the WWE. They eventually won the Raw Tag Team titles. Come the end of 2018, Drew turned on Ziggler and the two had a brief program and you'd think that Drew would now break out on his own but that time wasn't yet. He instead had an alliance with Bobby Lashley and Baron Corbin, the trio wrestling the Shield in their final chapter. And heading into WrestleMania, it was McIntyre taking on the company's new chosen one. Roman Reigns. As a heel, you could see Drew really in his element. The serious march to the ring, the angry expressions, the no game attitude and the brutal powerhouse moves. 2019 wasn't the craziest year for him. He lost to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, then continued his saga of being in teams when he became the muscle for Shane McMahon. In this, he and Shane got to take on Undertaker and Roman Reigns in a really fun match at Extreme Rules. The rest of the year was spent just hovering around and it seemed like a reason to worry for some, but those worries were put away the following year. Drew was now on his own. He started a win streak heading into the Rumble, and this Rumble story was who could take out the Beast. Brock Lesnar entered at number 1 and dominated the entire field. And then out at number 16 came Drew McIntyre, who got the honors to eliminate Brock Lesnar from the match, hitting him with a claymore, sending him tumbling over the top rope and out. The pop was monstrous. Now it was clear that it would be Lesnar and Drew at WrestleMania, but it was Drew who went on to win the entire thing. You don't know how a person's feeling but you can tell a lot by how they're acting and there was Drew McIntyre crying in the middle of the ring having just won not only one of WWE's landmark matches but an all time great Royal Rumble. The question was of course who would he choose but I think everyone knew that there was only one right answer and that was Brock Lesnar. Drew in the build up was made to look like an absolute monster. There was a segment on Raw where he claymored Brock Lesnar three times in one segment. This wasn't your classic baby face here for the fans. This was a man hell bent on proving that this was his story to finish and the ones who saw him as the future weren't wrong. Now it was all eyes on Tampa for WrestleMania 36 and he was going to main event the show. It was time for him to have his moment in front of thousands of screaming fans and millions watching around the world. Only problem is the world had other ideas. The COVID-19 pandemic caused live sports and entertainment to stop and the world as we know changed. But as the classic saying in showbiz goes, the show must go on and it did. From an empty warehouse in Orlando, Florida, WWE presented WrestleMania 36. In just under 7 minutes with a dominant display to add to that, McIntyre was able to beat Brock Lesnar and become WWE Champion. His destiny had been fulfilled. A moment that traditionally would have bookended WrestleMania with screaming fans and pyro, but instead it was in front of no one. It wasn't traditional. Drew McIntyre's career has never been traditional. There he was, 
reaching out to the fans through the camera in an emotional moment. Six years ago, this seemed like a far reality. Drew McIntyre proved that sometimes it's okay to fall flat on your face because when you get up, the victory is much sweeter. Comeback complete. Now it was time for his true test. It was time to see if Drew McIntyre could carry the company through their most challenging period. And he did just that. Giving audiences the perfect mix of intensity, power, and an authentic charisma in his WWE title reign. He was completely in his element. He took on the likes of Seth Rollins, Dolph Ziggler, and Bobby Lashley. By the summer, he was in a rivalry with Randy Orton, successfully defended it at SummerSlam before Orton won the title at Hell in a Cell, losing the title after 203 days only for him to get it back later in the year. The company clearly had trust in him. They clearly wanted him to be the WWE Champion. At Survivor Series, he took on Roman Reigns in a champion versus champion match, which he eventually lost. He was able to beat Goldberg at Royal Rumble 2021, getting into rivalries with Miz, AJ Styles, and Keith Lee in the process. After a cash-in from The Miz, he lost the WWE Championship. But for the WWE, there was a big moment on the horizon. For the first time in over a year, WWE was back in front of fans for WrestleMania 37. And Drew was challenging for the WWE title now held by Bobby Lashley. Even though it was a year after the fact, it seemed like WWE would give Drew his moment, but that wouldn't be. The rest of 2021 really didn't seem like a year befitting someone who just carried the company through the pandemic. He couldn't win the Money in the Bank ladder match. Heading into SummerSlam, he feuded with his old 3MB teammate Jinder Mahal. He did get a crack at the WWE title again facing Big E before he was moved to SmackDown. Here's where I think it's pretty safe to say it comes down to booking for him and not a lack of talent because he'd proven himself for a long, long time. Heading into WrestleMania 38, he was in a rivalry with Baron Corbin this coming after Drew was in the final two of the 2022 Royal Rumble. Perfectly enough, the last person to eliminate him was Brock Lesnar. So through this, you're thinking that maybe things should be better for Drew. But an opportunity presented itself. An opportunity to pull that crowning moment out and give it to Drew. Clash at the Castle, an event that McIntyre himself lobbied for. After 20 years, the UK finally had a pay-per-view, and Drew was built up as the man who could take down the Tribal Chief, someone who didn't need additional wrestlers to even up the odds. Roman Reigns, Drew McIntyre, undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Drew, of course, had gallantry as his theme song, and many fans wanted to hear the return of Broken Dreams, and that's exactly what we got. A beautiful prelude before his match, retrospecting his entire life story. Roman had been on a dominating run, and this was one of the few instances where all the stars aligned perfectly. A hot challenger, but it didn't happen. He couldn't beat Roman again. With the rest of this year being spent in a rivalry with Karrion Cross, followed by a War Games match against the Bloodline. In 2023, he was part of one of the matches of the year against Sheamus and Gunther at WrestleMania 39, a chop-for-chop, blow-for-blow slugfest which left audiences completely enthralled. After this, rumors started to swirl that Drew McIntyre was unhappy with the company. The few rivalries that I just rifled off, it's easy to see the frustration if that was the case. There were rumors that he'd be leaving the WWE to pursue a career elsewhere. Well, that ended up being proven false when he returned at Money in the Bank 2023. As of the recording of this video, he looks to be on a collision course against Gunther at SummerSlam. He still hasn't felt the taste of holding the World Championship in front of fans. He's never carried a WWE Championship into an arena of 30, 40, 50,000 screaming fans, and you can really make a case that Drew McIntyre hasn't been utilized the way he should be, especially after everything he's gone through and the complete overhaul he made to not only his wrestling style, but all aspects of his performance. The bottom line is this, this man was supposed to be the guy to carry the company in his early to mid 20s. It didn't happen for him, be it a perceived notion of his attitude, be it his problems outside the ring, it didn't materialize. In a few years, he was fired. He didn't take that as an opportunity to quit. We've seen so many people get fired from the WWE only to never make it back or they go into some sort of weird spiral that causes them to give up on wrestling and leave the business behind. But not with Drew. It was a workhorse mentality that brought Drew McIntyre credibility and a thought process where every opportunity he was given, he made sure to never take it for granted. Now what we have is a complete performer who's a jack of all trades, but the constant in this video is he's still waiting for that moment. Regardless of that, it's the comeback of a lifetime. 
to fail, to be left out to dry, to fall so far down the pecking order and then come back and become one of the marquee guys is truly something out of a movie. Whether it's the Scottish warrior, the Scottish psychopath, or whatever nickname he's going by, the story of Drew McIntyre shows persistence, dedication, and the importance to bet on yourself and never quit. He was able to make the impossible possible and gave us the comeback of a lifetime.